I'm a collector. Statues, graded comic books, autograph memorabilia, bodies. I used to collect other things like guns, watches, notches on my bedpost. There are so many different things to collect and each of them have pros and cons to them. The majority of my collection is made up by the first three. So today we're going to look at those pros and cons to each one and help you decide what is the best thing to collect. Bodies. Definitely bodies. As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Extreme channel. My name is Mr. X, and today we are looking at the pros and cons of collecting graded comics, high-end statues, and autograph memorabilia. Because I wouldn't say I'm an expert in those three, but I own a shitload. And I've done tons of other videos in the past on mistakes you can buy, things to look out for. But today I kind of wanted to look at those three things. Now some of them have specific attributes that they share with the rest, and some are individual aspects when it comes to collecting. So for example, one huge negative part about collecting these high-end statues, if you're in that realm, is what the fuck to do with the boxes. It's not only one of the worst things about collecting that I've talked about over and over, but it's not something you have to deal with when you're talking about graded comics. So while we're going to talk about specific things to collect today, here is the list of the most popular things. Number one, believe it or not, is stamps. That doesn't surprise me, but it kind of does because to me it's kind of boring. Two is coins. Three is baseball pins, which I would have thought baseball cards or sports cards would be higher than that. Four are vinyl records, makes sense to me. Five is comic books. Six is wine and alcohol, which I don't collect that, I drink it. Seven is the trading cards, there it fell in there. And eight is actually toys. I would personally would speculate guns and cars would probably be on that list as well, or jewelry or watches. But I'm sure it's accurate because I got it from the internet and everything on the internet is true especially regarding politics. So in my collection, as far as quantity, I could probably look because I have it for insurance reasons, but I probably own three or 400 statues, probably 100 to 200 items of autograph memorabilia, and somewhere about 150 to 250 graded comic slabs. Now, as far as value, I don't even want to know, but they're all in the six figure plus range. So in full transparency, this video is kind of off the cuff. I don't even have a list in front of me as I usually do prepare for the videos a little bit, However, all my fucking jokes are on the fly because that's how I roll. But this entire video is on the fly. So let's start off with kind of the most obvious space as a negative and a positive. So obviously with high-end statues, space is a huge deal. They take up massive amounts of real estate. And not only that, but when you get into like Maja cases or other display options, it's it really expensive just to display those. So for statues, it's a huge negative, but where you have things like graded comics, you can buy a $5 wall holder. As you guys know, most of my autograph memorabilia is also hanging on the wall. Now granted, eventually you run out of wall space. However, it's not as crucial as actually livable space that statues take up. So when it comes to space, graded comics or autograph memorabilia are the way to go. Specifically, I would say graded comics. Because while you don't have to necessarily hang them on the wall, they still don't take up a lot of room in the little placeholders I have behind me that you guys see all the time. And if you want to see a lot of this stuff, you can check out a room tour from last year where it has mainly statues. Recently, I did a partial room tour of the graded comics right here. And then there's plenty of other videos on the autograph memorabilia. So space was the first category we looked at. And while I briefly mentioned the boxes, the boxes for these giant statues are just another negative for space. It's a lose-lose when it comes to space and real estate with statues. Now another thing is about value. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and a lot of times value is. Statues are kind of all over the place. And while there are some general rules of thumb, it's not an exact science. So a low ES or addition size in statues many times may make that statue more valuable, but it doesn't always. But then again, statues don't deteriorate like graded comics do over time. That's why when you talk about graded comics, the grade or condition of that comic greatly affects the value. I mean, on a scale from one to 10, you might have a 9.0 and a 9.2, and that could literally mean thousands of dollars. So condition is kind of the next big category. This is huge. Now with statues, there's some obvious condition issues. If it's broken or something like that, however, that's not generally the case. 
However, condition greatly affects graded comics. Autographs, it will to a certain extent. For example, if the autograph is smudged or what they actually autographed, was it a picture or a guitar? But comics, the condition of the comic is so crucial. So this is a negative or maybe a big positive depending on what the condition it's in. Where statues, you don't have to worry about that as much because let's be honest with statues, 99% of the time, if you know the right person, it's repairable. So I don't know if that's a pro or con, but condition is definitely one of the things that affects those three different items. Now, another category that applies to all three different types of collections is authenticity. Obviously, hugely important in the autograph memorabilia. That's where a lot of fallacy and a lot of forgery is done. And I've had separate videos in the past about authentication, whether it's through reputable companies like Beckett, JSA, PSA, DNA. No, that's not right. There are forgeries within statues as well, but most of the time, if you're knowledgeable about it, recasts are very easy to identify. And comics, thankfully, there's a lot of grading companies out there like CGC, CBCS, and more that will take care of that for you. However, it doesn't mean that fakes don't exist in that packaging. However, I'd say for the most part, graded comics and statues are pretty easy if you're knowledgeable to figure out where the fakes are, where autograph memorabilia is not at all. So I think that's a big negative for autograph memorabilia. It's a much bigger risk. Investment-wise, I think there's a clear winner, maybe not a clear loser, but first of all, statues, I think, are the biggest gamble when it comes to investment. Not only will you not know their value in five to 10 years, but you don't know their value when you're buying them. I mean, it's really all over the map. And I've done tons of videos on this, right? Here's a video about what affects the value of your statue. Graded comics, while they're not a sure thing, a little bit less risk. However, I've seen some key slabs go way down in price, but I think generally over time, because these are things that age, you can at least hold your value if not increase. And then just like statues, there's a number of things like pop culture, MCU, different things that will affect the value of that comic. Recently on that tour, you see all the Silver Surfer comics I've been buying up because not only is he my favorite character and I just love some of those covers, I strongly suspect all those will go up in value when he's reintroduced into the MCU. However, autograph memorabilia. So when somebody autographs something, eventually that person dies. It's one of the three sure factors in life. Taxes, death, and Mrs. X rolling her eyes when the delivery truck comes. So I'd say autograph memorabilia are the best investments because you know eventually not only do those items deteriorate over time, but less and less will be made. So when it comes to like an investment standpoint, I think autograph memorabilia is the best and statues are the worst with comics being somewhere in the big range in between. Desirability, so I would almost put this as like resellability and part of it obviously has to do with the value, but which of those three categories has a broader audience? Well, I'd first say statue collecting has the smallest audience for a number of reasons. One, it's just very different. Two, they cost a ton of money. And three, some people aren't as super cool as I am. Comics has a much bigger audience. However, I don't think it transcends across the general public. Probably 10 to 100 times the audience statue collecting is, but the general public is not gonna drop 1,000 or 10 or 50,000 on a comic. Autograph memorabilia, most people can relate to movies, sports, and music, which is a huge part of autograph memorabilia. So they'd love to have something by one of their favorite actors, athletes, or artists to actually have in their home. I'd say everyone has a favorite actor, favorite movie, favorite sports team, or favorite artist. So I think desirability clearly goes to autograph memorabilia, especially if you're looking to resell in the future. Now my next topic is spawned from this right here. So recently I had to move 150 statues out of an office. So I wanna talk about practicality. And you could label this relocatability, if that's a word. Yeah, I think it is, relocatability. But what if you have to move your collection of one of these three things? Kind of a no-brainer, statues suck. That is the worst one in the category. Autograph memorabilia can be very delicate. I have a lot of like big shadow boxes with guitars and boxing gloves and other unique setups that isn't as tough as statues, but I think a lot more breakages could happen. So I think autograph memorabilia kind of falls in the middle, although there is some easy stuff like photos or albums, but comics are the easiest to pack. And there is some risk breaking the cases. However, most of the time that is always repairable. So I think from a practicality or a relocatable standpoint, comics would win that category. All right, this next one is a big one. I think ability to hide it from your spouse. Now, clearly if they can see the checkbook, then who knows? All of them have significant risks. I'd say my most expensive pieces are between five and $10,000 each, and I have some in every single category. 
However, being a ninja with the postal delivery, unless you get halls like this right here, you can probably keep comic books hidden for the most part or under the radar. And then just going up in size, obviously autographed memorabilia would be next and statues are the hardest. You know, back in the day when I had stuff delivered to my office, I knew what magic hour was. That was when Mrs. X went to go pick up the kids. So I'd take the statue box home and I'd sneak it in the house and downstairs before she saw it to avoid that ever scary eye roll. All right, so that's just some advice for you guys on what direction you might want to go. Maybe you want to do everything. So with that, I don't think we can pick a clear winner because every person is a little bit different. If I had to choose just one, honestly, statue collecting would be at the bottom of the list. I think I would probably do a little bit of a mix of autograph memorabilia and comics. And technically, you can get some autograph comics, but I would be more focused on the autograph memorabilia. I like that better because I like movies, sports, and music better than comics. What about you? Between the three categories we discussed today, or even some we talked about at the beginning, what do you think is the best for you to collect? And it may not be the one you want to collect the most, just what works best for you. Throw that down in the comments below, because every single comment I do read, and you can potentially win a statue with that. We will be giving all of these statues away, plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Very different video today. Kind of did it off the cuff, so if it was a little wonky, yeah, I'm like a 60-year-old because I use the word wonky. Give me a like for that. Wonky is cool. Hit that like button. It really helps the channel. Check out some of these other videos. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.